So collecting for some of these retro systems has become very expensive, especially in the last like five years or so. Some of these games have doubled, even tripled in price, especially on the side of things like the GameCube or the original PlayStation. But if you're someone who's looking to get into game collecting for retro systems now, there is one system that I think is a great way to get started, and that's the original Xbox. So, I actually had MVG, who was looking to downsize his collection a little bit, send me over just a box of original Xbox games as I'm looking to add to my collection. I figured we'd see what he sent uh, here today. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps that a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So the box he sent over, it's, it's pretty sizable. It's like 20 some odd pounds and uh, shout out to, I think it was UPS, USPS, or the mail service, whoever threw it at my door basically and ran off. It like ripped the entire corner up here. Uh, and it was kind of open, but MVG did a pretty good job boxing it, bubble wrap, all of this. So a quick glance inside, nothing was really damaged. <laughs> so let's, I guess, just open this up. I also have the Xbox here that I did the HDMI modification on, a monitor. I thought we would pop a few of these games in just to check them out because I think the original Xbox has aged pretty well, especially comparative to like the PS2, the GameCube, did pretty well too, but like the original Xbox had a lot of things when it came to performance advantages and, and all of those as was the most powerful system at the time. Wow, and right away, MVG came through. Look at this. The Steelbook case for the uh, Halo 2. If you remember this launch, this was massive at the time. I mean, Halo 2 is still really, really good. Is this says, please contact Xbox Australia. Did he? He sent me the PAL version of Halo 2. MVG gets this bucket hat, and all of a sudden, he, he, he's doing things like sending PAL copies of Halo 2 out and downsizing his collection. Coincidence? I don't know. I mean, he came up with some pretty good ones. I got the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. This has Third Strike, and I, I wasn't a big fighting game guy, but my friends played this a ton. It had like online play as well, and I remember right, the only play was all right. They had like scoreboards and even voice chat at, at the time, which was pretty cool. And that one's complete. That's that's a pretty good copy there. I mean, I'm looking through this and pretty much everything is good. Like I'm not seeing a bunch of sports games or anything. Here's Castlevania, Curse of Darkness. Oh, here's Black. If you remember this game, this like blew me away at the time when it released. It was from EA, which, EA's fallen off a bit now, obviously, but like back then they were dropping some really good games this generation, but this one in particular visually was extremely impressive. It's 480p, but when you're playing it, it, it just, it gave off a whole different graphical level from what we were used to at the time. You know, I never played Justice League Heroes. I always saw this on store shelves and I never tried it out. I just assumed it was a, a standard beat em up. This one is a 720p actually, you know what? Maybe we'll pop this one in. All right, so here we are in Justice League Heroes. Again, never played it. Standard, it looks like a standard just beat em up style game. All right, so I'm Superman, I can fly. So you have Batman with me. Punch, punch. Oh. Yeah, this is, this is a lot of what you got during this generation, which isn't, a, I mean, isn't a bad thing. It's a standard like 3D style beat em up game with uh, RPG elements to it. Like there's, Bunch of options around experience, split even, and damage numbers, and all of this. And a lot of it was couch co-op then. Especially with like third-party games because they didn't necessarily leverage like Xbox Live as much, or uh, or PlayStation 2's online, or the GameCube's was pretty much non-existent. Access my powers. Oh. Oh yeah, I got like heat vision. I got like the, the ice breath. I, I honestly believe it's it's pretty serviceable. It does not look bad, really. I mean, it looks like an Xbox game, but not like a blurry mess or anything. And yeah, I know I'm using the, the HDMI connection, which really helps clean up the image. But if you had like a standard HDMI connection to the back with like a, a third party cable, you would still get a, a decent enough picture. Certainly one that I think would translate pretty well to like a larger screen now compared to using like composite cables to get it done. So like you have a little menu here where you can go through and 
upgrade your powers and ability. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like X-Men Legends. I wonder if this was just them just trying to do a take on that from like WB Games and DC. Although it does say it's just one to two players. So unfortunately it doesn't take advantage of the four controller slots. Oh, Deus Ex. I, I know looking back on it now, this <laughs> compared to the PC version, not nearly as good, but at the time getting Deus Ex on, uh, especially this one in particular on a console was really impressive. This didn't go to like uh, the, the PS2 or the GameCube. For a while there, the Xbox was getting what I guess you'd consider like impossible PC ports, things like Half-Life 2. You got Panzer Dragoon Orta in here and this, was one of the one of the results of the Sega Microsoft partnership when that original Xbox first launched. There's Panzer, there's another disc underneath. Another PAL copy of it. How many bucket hats does this guy have? Yeah, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. Another game actually that's 720p. I I feel like that was this progressive scan on the GameCube? This might be another one to check out. I just really like the Tony Hawk uh, Pro Skater games, obviously at the time. Again, we've taken a massive step back with things like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5, but at least Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 that came from Vicarious Visions was pretty good, but I'm curious about some of these 720p games and how they look through this HDMI port. Okay, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, a game series that needs no introduction at all, and just initial impressions looking at it, it does look quite a bit better than what I remember it looking like on like the GameCube. Yeah, this looks a lot cleaner. And that's, like I said, that's kind of what you're gonna find with uh, a lot of these Xbox games is you're gonna most likely get the best version of the third party titles just because the system was more powerful at the time and offered, uh, I'd say better video options when it came to uh, like HD resolution, widescreen. Not that the other systems didn't have like progressive scan on the GameCube or, uh, higher resolution on the PS2, because the PS2 had games that were just like 1080i. I, I know Gran Turismo was up there with higher resolution, uh, but I know the original Xbox just felt more like a, a much more powerful system at the time. And even still now, like this is very noticeable how much better Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 looks. And performance wise, uh, probably gonna be about the same, I would assume, since they really went for like a higher frame rate smoother experience with Tony Hawk games, but other games that uh, maybe have frame rate issues on other platforms won't have this, at least as much of an issue on uh, the original Xbox here. I'm trying to think of what my favorite Tony Hawk Pro Skater game, I've, two obviously, but like on this generation when they were really like getting started, I Underground was good, but I don't know, something about three, maybe it was that initial like, like, wow, this looks really impressive even on the PS2 when I first saw it but like 2X on the original Xbox. That, that is a good one too, just because it's, it's basically the Xbox version of two. But again, a good experience here for Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 720p on the original Xbox. Although I will admit, I think I like the controller more on uh, the PS2 for the Tony Hawk games, probably just because I was so used to the original PlayStation uh, for like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Another big one was Chaos Theory. It looks way different on the Xbox compared to the GameCube or the PS2. There's NBA Jam. I never played this one. I like NBA Jam, but I, I never actually grabbed this generation of it. So maybe I'll check that one out. There's I Ninja, which is a super underrated like 3D platforming game. Definitely recommend checking that one out. Mech Assault 2. Lone Wolf, that is, it's a 16 by nine. You don't see a lot of those widescreen games either. The good version of 13 before they decided to destroy it with the recent remake of it. Oh, we even blitzed the league in here. If you remember playing this, it was uh, certainly a different take on like the arcade football games. <laughs> you had like characters getting steroids on the sidelines. They had like the X-ray of people getting their bones broken and stuff. But I actually remember having a blast Specifically with this one, the first one, I'm trying to think that I play it mostly on the original Xbox or the 360. I, I just remember playing it quite a bit back then. There's the other impossible port for P from PC, Half-Life 2. Forza Motorsport, pretty much where it all started right there. This is another PAL copy. Here's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus. This has up to four players. Looks like a, kind of like a 3D beat em up style game, that could be interesting. Well, I also played a ridiculous amount of true crime streets of LA, and it looks like this is a game that's not only 720p, but 16 by nine widescreen. Maybe we should check this one out too. Well, it's been a long time since I've played this game. I'm curious about the controls and how they're gonna hold up 
compared to what we're used to now. I mean, that's the biggest thing. If you go back to some of these older games, control schemes have gotten so much better since like the mid to early 2000s. So I'm doing like this targeting, like training now. And I already have a feeling it's, uh, it's gonna be a bit weird when we get out to the open world. So I immediately have an issue with the camera. For some reason, it's like, it's like going left rotates it the other way that I'm expecting. It's, it's very strange, but driving in the car, you gotta hold A. It's not like the right trigger, because the right trigger, you just start firing wildly into the air when you start pressing that in your car. I'm supposed to be driving somewhere, by the way, and I'm not even paying attention. Oh, okay. So I'm just taking out trees now. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> frame rate was still an issue back then in like open world scenarios like this. But this was a game that even back then, I know we had like Grand Theft Auto 3 and probably Vice City at this time. I'm trying to remember the exact year this came out in, but like this was still really fun. I mean, the shooting is still a little strange. You got like a diving move that everyone would use. The hand-to-hand -hand combat was better than Grand Theft Auto at the time. The open world still a little empty, but there were more things you could do in it. Like, you, like you could arrest people. There were chases that would happen, and it was, it was, it was a good game for its time. I didn't play the follow up. I think it was New York City. I just remember spending a lot of time with Streets of L.A. Yeah, visually it looks like an original Xbox game, but I again I, I think it's serviceable even for now, especially if you have a an HDMI connection like this. It's 16 by 9 and 720p. Absolute classic. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, this one desperately needs some kind of remaster, remake, just anything. I mean, can you imagine this with full online play? I mean, there was a ton to this game, absolutely loved it. Great game, you could sit down with a friend, couch co-op, and play through what was a very different Mortal Kombat experience. I remember they put like a demo out, or there was a demo, I'm trying to think if it was on a, a disc, if it was on a game. Um, but it, it kind of played through the initial part against Baraka, and then he got towards the end of the demo, and there was like a sword on the ground, and you both looked at it, went to jump for it, and they just cut the demo there. I'm not sure why that's always stuck with me for the, the demo itself, but this game was phenomenal. Completely recommend picking up, and it's 480p, so we'll be checking this one out. All right, here we go, Shaolin Monks. One of my favorite Mortal Kombat games. I know it sounds weird because there have been some good just straight up fighting games for the series. This was just such a different take on the overall Mortal Kombat franchise. And they've tried stuff like this before with like, what, Sub-Zero Mythology or something? It, not as good. This was it right here. And it's funny as I went into content, back at the, then they had a lot of stuff you unlocked in different crypts, like with Deadly Alliance and Deception, all this, but like, this did the same kind of thing. Uh, they also had demos, like Suffering 2 demos on here, and then they just have Mortal Kombat 2. So, that's kind of cool. Let's go into the single player. They do have co-op, and they also have a versus mode. Now, when you first start, you can pick either Liu Kang or Kung Lao, and then they have other characters that you unlock as you go through the game. The best part about this game, which I think they'll let me do on here anyway, is that you still were able to do different fatalities, which was pretty cool. And I remember unlocking some too, if I remember right. But it was it was pretty cool to be able to do that to different enemies as you built it up. Eventually, you could legit just in the middle of the battle, just to have, for example, Kung Lao's hat just slice right through someone. And you still get experience to like build up characters and, and all this. It's just still a very good, fun experience. Like, I mean, I think you can sit down right now, play through this and just have an absolute blast. It's weird to me that they haven't done anything with this game. Although I'll admit, I'm not sure how this game sold when it came out. So that maybe it didn't do that well. And they figured, hey, you know what? It just, it didn't work. Let's, let's just go back to what we know and just do the fighting games. I think that's the part I like the most about this game is they took everyone's moves and kind of just adapted them to be more of a beat em up style. It felt really creative at the time because we just knew Mortal Kombat as this fighting game with crazy fatalities and stuff. But when they started incorporating uh, these different moves into like the, this large arena style with a friend playing through in co-op, it was just such a different feeling for the franchise. So I'm to the part now where you do the fatality. You basically have to build up that red meter at the top. And then when you get there, you press white on the, the white button. And then you gotta actually put the combinations in. like that uh, which is pretty cool because then you get a nice animation just like that not only splitting 
them in half, but also the monetization status on the video. But Shaolin Monks, massive recommendation for me. If anyone out there from Netherrealm or WB is watching, we wanna see this remastered or remade for current platforms. Let's get that done. There's still just a ton of games in here. I might be wondering why I'm recommending the original Xbox when it comes to collecting. Well, one, I, I think the original Xbox is still pretty relevant now. Like some of these games, you can go back play and have a great time, especially if you have some people over and uh, you can do like four player couch co-op for a lot of these different titles. But the games aren't that expensive, which is kind of important when you look at other systems around this generation. The GameCube is already expensive. The PS2 is starting to get up there now, despite how large that library is. The original Xbox lagging behind a little bit, but I have a feeling we could get to a point where the original Xbox is just expensive to buy for. Could be a while, five, 10 years, but it, you might look back on right now, you know, 10 years from now and go, wow, I wish I had started to buy games for this original Xbox because Microsoft has said they're done with their backwards compatibility program, which means you're not gonna see many of these games pop up on the Xbox store going forward. If it's not backwards compatible, we can only assume right now that there are no plans to make them that. Now you will get some games that just get remasters for current systems like Sphinx. I still think that's a good 3D platforming game, but then other games have licensing issues, whether it's with different cars or music and it becomes a problem. So looking at this generation, the system that had the best performance for the most part with third party games was the original Xbox. That you don't need like a memory card or anything since you had the internal hard drive. And it appears like most of the games, or I should say a lot of the games are more geared towards kind of the HD TV settings where you'll get a better picture and you can find different component cables and they also make HDMI cables, which isn't like, it's not gonna give you the cleanest picture compared to something like soldering a board with an HDMI port into your Xbox, but it'll still give you a serviceable picture. And just looking through this box, there are some games I wouldn't mind just popping in and checking out again, because it's been so long, like Ultimate Spider-Man. Remember when that one released, or Driver 3. It's, I think I rented this one at one point and didn't really play as much as I would've liked to. So going back, looking at games that are $10 or less to build up that original Xbox collection, I think is a good idea. Like as basic as it is, I think I'd get a blast out of going back and playing a few rounds of the original Ghost Recon. But let me know what you guys think about this one. If you've considered collecting again for the original Xbox, as I'm starting to look more and more towards that, especially with how expensive some of the other systems are getting now. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.